Let's get you all the business news now. An Indian markets has scaled to fresh record highs intraday, but end with gains of about seven tenths of a percent. Nifty maintains its three-week winning streak. Sensex ended above a 66,000 mark. IT sector gained over four percent, led by TCS, which rallies the most since November 2020. Uh, for the week, Nifty Bank snaps a two-week gaining streak to end marginally in the red. Veteran investor Shankar Sharma tells BU Prime that he is not a believer of investing in businesses with government exposure. In an exclusive interaction with Neeraj Shah, Sharma says that business to government or B2G businesses have very low price to earnings ratio in reference to the rally in defense stocks. Shankar spoke to Neeraj Shah and said that investors must not buy every theme that's playing out. Listen in. I'm never a big believer in uh, doing I mean, not doing business, but investing in companies with, with government exposures. Uh, first and foremost, without getting into payment cycles and corruption and everything, which are, I think, endemic to the sector. And I will, I'm not prepared to believe that suddenly things are so rosy that you can win things on, on merit alone. It doesn't work like that. I talk to companies that do B2G and there is enough money changing hands. So, so that itself is a hygiene problem right there and then of course the rest of the downs once you win the business how you execute how you get paid how you actually pay to get paid all of those problems still exist but markets are markets well let's not you know blame markets for uh, running ahead of themselves on certain themes and themes are cyclical defense is the flavor of the last 12 months time uh, you know idea forge you know has done phenomenally well while doing business i think most of it is with the government I'm not a big fan of this. I'm not talking the, the, the space of drones. I'm talking about the B2G business overall. In fact, I looked at a transaction four or five months back, looked at a very good company, but the list of customers was primarily government. And I just said no, because this is a traditionally low PE business itself. And, uh, you know, for a very good reason. And I find that I'm spoiled for choice. Again, we don't have to buy everything that goes up, Neeraj. Understand this. We don't have, we are not compelled to buy every theme that is playing out. I mean, that's, then, then you're being very rash. And at least I want to prevent my rashness, even though the animal inside me will tell me, play this, play that. I just want to keep my game very, very tight right now. And defense, or for that matter, B2G doesn't come into that, you know, that, that field of play. Shares of Reliance Industries have rallied about 7% this month as the company is planning to demerge its financial arm. BQ Prime spoke to Indus Equity Advisor Sushil Choksi, who believes that the stock is attractive with a three to five year time frame. Speaking about performance of various segments, Choksi expects new energy businesses led by hydrogen and solar remain bright prospects. Listen in. Breakup of Reliance right now. It seems that oil to chemical is anywhere between 750 to 800 rupees and oil to gas, which is the current KG basin fine, may be a big kicker to support that entire piece because of gas supply, which is going to increase to a sizable amount. And I think commercial production was announced on 29th, 30th of June. Now, after that, if you look at retail, 1000 to 1200, depending which report you read to. Uh, GEO has a similar range again around 1,800 to 1,200 depending on how you factor in. So some of parts everybody is valuing between 2,800 to 3,200 rupees a share. But the future is brighter because alternative, the new energy business led by hydrogen and solar and keep in mind barring two large groups, everybody is dependent on raw material from China whereas Reliance and the other groups are looking at polysilicon integrated because nobody in India, China controls 95% of polysilicon. So everybody is going to go about solar, but there's no value integration done from basic raw material to finished products. So Reliance is looking at integrating the entire solar chain and that would be linked to hydrogen. So people have started talking about that value. And if you take a 10 year outlook on that business is a different thing. And if you take a one year outlook is different. So if you break up all these summer parts, I think at 27.50 and you have a three outlook, the stock mix very attractive and people who are playing for demerger can happen in 12 months, 24 months and the breakup will have. So if you're looking at compounding with a three to five year outlook, the lands remains attractive and that's the basic story uh, and not dependent on quarter on quarter earning. But anyway, 
the earning for this year would be approximately 140 rupees EPS and uh, profit before depreciation, interest and tax before the demerger consolidation basis was being estimated at 1,65 to 1,75 thousand crores. India's structural and cyclical pillar is best in two decades. That's the word coming in from Taimur Beg, chief economist at DBS Group. Beg highlighted improvement in bank non-performing assets, corporate debt to equity ratio at corporate level as tailwinds that could fuel India's growth. He added that India can also gain from reorientation of global supply chains. Listen in. I'm making a presentation yesterday and I had to spread the positive developments in two columns, cyclical and structural. And each of those columns, I started running out of space. And this is, again, a remarkable thing. I've been covering India for two decades now, and I don't think I've been managed to fill that table with my rather you know sober jaundiced view of the global economy uh, so easily. So that's a good thing. So what's in that table that is making me uh, feel you know somewhat giddy after like, like, probably for the first time with respect to India. Um, look, on the cyclical side, a lot of things are happening, right? I mean, the RBI has raised rates by 250 basis points, probably doesn't have the need to hike any further, especially if food and fuel prices go in the right direction. Uh, we have seen the current account, which has always been India's Achilles heel, again, on the back of softening commodity prices, and perhaps to some extent, a bit of a subdued nature of import demand for certain goods uh, is under a very good situation, which bodes well for the rupee, the reserves, and so on. Uh, we are also seeing this uh, move uh, sort of globally, you know, thinking about reorientation of supply chain and so on. And that dialogue, to a large extent, includes a country like India, and, uh, and India is a very big beneficiary of that. When we look at now the debt equity ratio of the Indian corporate sector, when we now look at the NPL numbers coming out of Indian banks, it is now capable of taking part in a domestically driven financial intermediation for that big investment need, the infrastructure push of India. So you want to grow where you have the goodwill of the rest of the world, but even for whatever reasons, global economy takes a tumble and global investor sentiment wanes, that should not mean that your entire growth dynamic gets unraveled. This is the big dynamic we saw in the context of the East Asian miracle in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Countries with current account surpluses, strong export base, had domestically generated savings to fund their expansion, their growth picture. And I'm beginning to see the India finally get around to that to some extent. Uh, it's still a long task. I would argue that savings rate in India have rooms to go up. I would argue that there's substantial room for crowding in investment with reducing the role of the public sector in certain areas. But those are discussions on the margin, net net, cyclical and structure, quite a few tailwinds in place. Um, and, uh, and that makes me think, and I agree with my uh, India economist Radhika Rao on this issue, that we may be in a position to start thinking about upgrading India's potential GDP growth rate for the medium term. India's wholesale prices contracted for the third straight month at 4.18% in June. WPI stood at 3.48% in May. The current point is at the lowest level since October 2015. Inflation in manufactured products stood at minus 2.71%. Primary inflation stood at minus 2.88%. Cereals, paddy, pulses and wheat saw a slight rise in June.